Awesome, yeah. I'm so happy that we're able to facilitate connections uh, at this event. Uh, and uh, travel payments is a really interesting topic. Uh, we've tried to gather people that know a lot about the space and where it's going and how travel, uh, how payments are being applied in travel. Uh, so, so yeah, we brought together uh, an all-star panel, uh, including Erica, uh, whose product you've seen. Uh, you already know about what she's doing, but uh, by her early 20s, uh, she had traveled to 40 plus countries, so she really understands uh, what, uh, what it means to travel and uh, is really helping people travel in a sustainable way. Uh, we also have David Fry from Pays. Uh, so uh, David also travels quite a bit. Uh, his company is focused on uh, installment payments, so that's taking a big payment, turning into a whole bunch of small payments. Uh, and uh, he travels a lot. He has three kids who are all Division I ski racers. Uh, so I, I don't know if he travels for business or pleasure. I don't know how you classify that, but that's, yeah, that, that's, that's pretty intense. Uh, and yeah, a few years ago, uh, probably would have been hard to like start your own bank. So I'm, I'm interested to hear how to pay, how te technology has enabled that kind of uh, that kind of product. Uh, we have Lion Lay from GroupDesk. A GroupDesk helps people with uh, group travel. So you can imagine if you're 20 people going on a ski trip, it helps you do all the logistics behind uh, what you need to do, and also the other companies that work with group travel just helps make that a really easy process. Uh, so. GroupDesk isn't a payments company, but Lion actually focused on their payments system, which was quite, quite complex. So that'll be a really great, uh, great perspective on how travel companies should be thinking about payments and uh, how people actually convert. Uh, and last but not least, we have Mark Blubstein. So Mark's background is in chess. He was Canada's youngest chess grandmaster. Uh, also loves to travel, uh, and uh, and he's from <laughs> he's from Wave Financial. So Wave Financial is uh, is not travel focused, but it's a really big uh, tra really big uh, payments and financial company that helps people along the line, uh, all the way from accounting through to payments and all kinds of different uh, financial products. Uh, more than three million customers, and uh, he'll be able to talk about general trends uh, in payments. Uh, and, uh, and help us understand what we, what we should be doing, doing in travel if we're not doing it already. So, uh, fantastic uh, panel. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I'm going to start out uh, just with something uh, really nailed down to why we're talking about this in travel. Uh, so as an e-commerce uh, vertical, travel has the highest average order value, uh, but it also has the highest cart abandonment rate. So, uh, so yeah, there, there are a lot of amazing opportunities in travel, but there are huge challenges as well. Uh, I'd just like to hear from each of you, like how you think about yourself in this context, and and what you, wh how that makes you just conceptualize what you do. Sure. So I think I think I'd heard that. I think I'd heard it framed that way before about the cart abandonment kind of thing, and I thought how how with what we're doing, if we we were helping people save for this in advance, would that actually change the results? If someone knew that they already had this money put aside in advance specifically for this purpose on these dates, would that end up changing conversion? And obviously, I don't have an exact answer for that right now, but I think that's one of the things that we'd like to work into discovery. Um, and in terms of when we set out to be a B2C fintech product, we kind of said, well, let's revolutionize the way people save and spend on travel. People also have no idea how much in total after they've gone on a trip, how much they actually ended up spending, right? A lot of your trip gets booked in different pieces. You've booked a flight, and then you've booked accommodations, and then maybe then you paid for your excursion, some of them when you're there, maybe some of them in advance, and some of your meals. So it's a very complicated thing. So I think longer term for people to actually understand how much a trip actually cost and how much they could save in advance to make it doable without any debt would be, would be interesting. So it's not one of our primary focuses today, but I, I think it's a fascinating topic to look at for conversion rates especially. Move down the line. Yeah. Hey. Thanks, Max, and uh, thanks for the invite. Great. Uh, great to be here. Um, yeah. I think. I think a lot of people kind of uh, have an experience of looking aspirationally at a holiday and and going into some site, whatever the generally the one that's the fastest, the simplest to kind of nail down some of the easy points, and and to get a sense of at that time of year, at that type of star hotel. Uh, with these type of flights, how much that's going to cost. Um, 
there was no real intent there, but it shows up as intent and as card abandonment. And, and so the, the travel business is really good at pulling people into search to, to think aspirationally about what they want to do and, and, and kind of then creates these uh, potentially inflated numbers of, 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 of not being able to convert them into intent. So, so the trick really then is, is, is not to stop that from happening, but you actually you want to benefit from the fact that people are actually doing that and now they're there. How do we actually get them to do something, right? So we look at that problem. Um, so we're focused on solving problems for consumers, um, solving problems for merchants and lenders. So we're a platform, and, and, and those are all the constituents that we look at. And, and consumer, uh, really looking at consumer behavior is, is kind of what drives a lot of this, right? So for us, we've got two levers that we can use. Uh, one is giving a, um, a prime or non-prime borrower an alternative payment option. Um, so think about 20 years ago when you went to buy a car, you were looking at a $40,000 car and you're thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to afford that? And then some genius, I'd, I'd love to tell you it was me, and I've been around that long, so it could, be, it could have been, but uh, it wasn't, uh, came up with the thought of, well, it's not a $40,000 car, it's, 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 no, it's you, it's just me, yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's not me, it's you. <laughs> um, uh, taking that forty thousand uh, dollar car payment, car into a three hundred twenty nine dollar a month payment, right? So, and, and then you start thinking of what that does to flip people's mindsets in terms of affordability, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and whether I'm a prime, uh, you know, I've got five credit cards in my wallet and they're all gold, and you know, I've got fifty thousand limit on each of them, super prime probably, or uh, I have very little access to credit cards, right? Okay. So, so it's about creating that awareness, which then turns to enablement. So that's, that's the financing tool that we can offer. And then really um, in the way, and I think most people realize or, or know or don't know that Amazon's one-click prime patent expired last September. Um, so they're really good at, you know, what's prime really good at? Prime's really good at, uh, sure, the next day delivery is great, but I don't have to keep putting my credit card and my shipping details in every time. So if you sort of think about what, and, and people are willing to do around the world, whether it's WeChat Pay or Alipay, they're willing to do things for simplicity that would surprise you, right? In terms of trust, in terms yeah. of giving up things. So, so we can use that then to focus on consumer journey and really helping then with that conversion. So tie that in with a financing offer and make that a, an amazing, you know, very, click, very easy, I wouldn't necessarily say one click, but a, a really smooth process for people and get them in and out. There's a brand new opportunities, yeah. So luckily for us, our business, uh, our travelers aren't so aspirational. They're usually fairly locked in when uh, they're doing a wedding trip or a school trip or something like this. Uh, their commitments are, uh, you know, more social. So uh, our travelers uh, tend to have a much lower abandonment rate, uh, and we focus on you know getting them excited as much hype as possible uh, and to make that booking process easy for them. So uh, the way that we come into this is just making it easy for our travelers to book and uh, to get as much out of their trip as they want, uh, having access to you know upselling for activities and uh, uh, generally making you know, the payment process very easy for them. So giving them uh, as much flexibility in the financing uh, as possible. So that's what we offer. Yeah. I, think, I think it's just both. Yeah. Oh, two together? I think two together at that. Oh, I can turn my on. Yeah. So yeah, let's just do one mic on at a time. Yeah. So. conversion for a few months actually last year so I have a fair bit of data out there conversion on ticket sizes that are bigger which they are in travel is much lower than on smaller um, items where if you're talking about thousands of dollars on a trip people want to shop around people need to do the research another point is actually the time between purchase and use which also reduces conversion so there there are these variables that are that are there that are, w are well known to impact it. We at Wave are very focused on conversion where we have invoicing and invoicing is 100% free 
and we want to convert those invoices into payments. So those couple of months, we're looking at all conversion ratios. And we're always looking to reduce that friction. I'm a bit lucky, actually, because today we announced a partnership with Microsoft that is focused on conversion, where end customers can actually pay invoices without leaving their Outlook inbox. And when we're talking about that conversion, that's, that's going to be key there, instead of going somewhere to, um, to an outside link in the Wave app. Um, it, it's key, we'll continue working on that. But it's, uh, it's not easy, that's for sure. That all makes a lot of sense. And I mean, there, there were two really interesting kind of themes there. Uh, so uh, for two of you, the thing was uh, basically being really well prepared. So with Group Desk, that's helping people get everything uh, in one place and make everything make sense, uh, making sure that you're kind of planning for things ahead of time. And then uh, for, for David and Mark, it's, it's you know, making sure that people are able to do, th do something as easily as possible. Uh, do you see, how do you see that contrast as interplaying? Do you guys see uh, yourselves as kind of touching on different customers, or is it just more optionality? Let's start. I don't, know, I don't know if I have a good answer for this one. I think it's obviously different problems. If you're planning a group trip, that's a very different problem from just deciding whether or not to book something today as an individual. I think there's also, especially in Wave's case with this new Microsoft partner partnership, there's an aspect of this that comes back to user experience. And how quickly can I commit to this? And if you give me an extra 10 seconds, would I have buyer's remorse or would I second guess my decision versus if in two clicks everything's done, it's okay, this is committed and regardless of the size of the purchase or how far away it is, did that make it so easy that I am now committed and so maybe I'll actually follow through with it. Um, I'd also be curious about, I'm not sure at what point, and again, my familiarity with the travel space is only up and coming as of recently, but I'm curious about when airlines said, or Air Canada in particular said, okay, you have 24 hours to cancel everything and get all your money back. How did that change things? Did that make f people more confident with following through with their purchase? Did people end up going back on it? Or did that level of security just make them still follow through with the purchase and then they actually didn't go back and refund the ticket? So all still things I guess I myself am still learning, but things to consider in this space. Um, I'm going to go off script here. Is that okay? Um, in the mid-1950s, there's a little story. I'm going to be really quick. There, there was a... Uh, <laughs> no, you don't. It's interesting, though. Um, there was a gentleman in uh, New York, a r relatively wealthy gentleman who was out for dinner. And uh, he got the bill, and he went to reach for his wallet. And guess what? And actually, by the way, this happened to me last week. This is terrible. Like, lost everything. But his wallet wasn't there. Did not have the cash. Could not pay for his dinner. So he looked around the restaurant and saw somebody that he knew. And you can imagine kind of the, you know, having to do this. Uh, he asked them if he, if, could, could I borrow the cash to pay for my dinner? Right? And he went home and he said to his wife, this is not going to happen to me again. There has to be a better way where I, if I'm dining around New York at different clubs, where I could have a way to pay for that. Bingo. So he created a, the first credit card in the mid-1950s called Diners Club. And ever since then, folks, <laughs> we've had the same, relatively the same piece of plastic uh, in our pockets. And um, really, uh, we've obviously seen advancements in uh, finance, we've seen advancements in technology um, that have uh, happened since the 1950s. Uh, I think the, one of the jokes with uh, um, uh, innovative banking is that that's an oxymoron, uh, like jumbo shrimp, but um, I think it was Paul Volcker who said that uh, the only innovation to come out of banks is, uh, in the last 30 years is an ATM. But th there's obviously ways in which we can provide financing to people um, that's more responsive, 
um, that really understands them. Does anybody kind of get now that you know e-commerce is all about engagement and pull? You can't push anything. So how do we how do we understand what that customer wants, and how do we provide for those wants like that really personalizes that experience? And, and credit has evolved to the point where we don't need to charge everybody the same flat rate of 19.9 or 29.9, right? Um, banks make a ton of money on those rates. And I think there's there's other ways that we can do that that's beneficial really for, for everybody in the ecosystem. Sorry, so I didn't go totally off script, but yeah. I've forgotten the question. So <laughs> <laughs> the contrast was a there okay. between, uh, between planning and making conversion really easy, do you see that as contrast in different types of customers? Or is that, do you just have to be prepared for everything? I'm not sure how to speak to that. I'd say that there's a, a slightly different focus in, in the four companies where you can either be focused on the travel product or on the payments product. And for Wave, we're trying to reduce the friction in the payments product, whereas we're not the ones providing the travel product. But when you're providing the travel product, you're focused on being the best product there. And that's why I think that we have different uh, vantage points there. And I'm learning a lot from your vantages, yeah, your vantage points there. And I will just note that one of the highlights of today was learning that Erica uses Wave. <laughs> <laughs> Off topic. <laughs> Glad to hear. And I. So a bit of context on group test so you all understand what I'm talking about. All right. So so a bit of background on group desk to give you context for what I'm about to talk about in terms of our uh, payment scheduling system. Uh, so we are a group travel company, so we enable uh, big you know, people, uh, groups to uh, travel together. Um, a lot of the industry does not use the same technology that they use uh, in single individual travelers that they, and then they do in groups. Um, so a lot of the industry is still using, you know, spreadsheets. They're on pen and paper. Uh, so we're bringing uh, this this part of the industry, which we uh, do to our market research about 15, 20 percent, uh, into the modern world. Uh, so this is a ton of logistics for us, uh, including uh, front end uh, working with travelers and uh, getting those sales, those conversions, uh, as well as doing the payment scheduling and the consumer financing. Um, so we did, uh, we did a, a very large redesign of our uh, payment scheduling system uh, this year. Uh, so that would be you know, everything to do with uh, you know, our payment schedules, different pricing options per client, um, uh, per traveler, uh, enabling the uh, trip planner or the travel provider to come up with their own custom uh, schedules for that trip and, and uh, converting it as uh, time goes on between conversion and actual travel date. So there's a, a global control over the, the schedule as well as a custom level. So both the travelers and the travel providers uh, have control over this payment schedule. Um, so enabling us uh, you know, to get to that point in, involves you know, a ton of flexibility and customizability, which uh, has been uh, you know, fairly tricky for us. But uh, we're, looking, uh, we're, we're finding that this adds a lot of value to our company. One thing I found interesting just in our preliminary conversation was that you guys ended up building a lot of stuff. With right. Your credit card uh, vault. Um, what What was the driver between uh, either building or buying a solution? What What kind of made that? Uh, That's right. So our our payment system is uh, all the way from the the traveler entering their credit card information uh, to uh, su uh, making um, supplier payments. Um, so we store uh, our travelers' credit card information in our very own uh, credit card vault. Um, and the reason we want to do this is so that we can have multiple integrations with, um, with uh, payment providers. Uh, so a big problem in the travel agency, our uh, travel providers uh, have a lot of difficulty getting and maintaining uh, merchant accounts uh, with payment providers. 
so we have uh, Stripe, Braintree, PayPal, uh, and we are agnostic there. We, we can uh, switch between providers uh, whenever and however we like. So that reduces a lot of dependence uh, from us as a business on, on them. Uh, there have been, you know, we've seen many other travel companies, you know, the birth and death of them is, you know, if they run into trouble with their providers, uh, you know, they can be doing fine in all other capacities and, uh, and that's it for them. Yeah. So, so the extra control is worth the extra effort kind of thing. That's absolutely right. That's great. That's cool. Uh, one really interesting thing that came up just as I was kind of chatting with people uh, before this panel, people kept asking about cryptocurrency. Uh, is everybody really likes cryptocurrency as an idea, but is it something you should be preparing for? Uh, is it something you should actually be integrating yet? Is it is it kind of ready for uh, for game time? Uh, any, any of you guys interested in talking to that? Or are you guys thinking about crypto at all? No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. uh, l listen, I've, I've been to a, a, a probably 15 uh, crypto blockchain events, uh, including a big one in San Francisco a few weeks ago that was tied into while well, I was really there, which was a uh, alternative or fintech lending conference. Um, there's too much volatility, right? So a, a currency needs to be a, a mechanism of exchange and a store of value. So, you know, they're really not either of those right now to any great extent. B Bitcoin is trying to be a means of exchange. Um, the problem is that if, you're, if your business is operating on margins that are single digits, um, by the time you get to exchange that for fiat, uh, you're, you've lost all your margin, potentially, right? So you're better to set up a crypto trading desk uh, <laughs> and get in the business of trading crypto because that's de facto what you're gonna, you know, what's going to happen if you do that right, right now. Um, just as a caveat, I'm a firm believer in the long-term value of the internet of value, which is blockchain. On the payment side, it's difficult for us to think about cryptocurrency, but we started off as an accounting firm with customers in over 200 countries now. And when we're thinking about cryptocurrency on the accounting side, we have to take that into account where it's another currency for us. And just because we are always thinking about improving our accounting platform and making sure that it's the best that it can be and the best one out there, we do think about cryptocurrency and the issues that might arise there and how that could be different from other currencies. And that naturally gravitate towards other parts of the business, like payments, but we're, we're some time away from seriously moving um, on the payment side for, for travel, as I see it, for a lot of the reasons that David pointed out. Um, but when we talk about large transactions as well, if we can reduce the transaction fee on cryptocurrency, then once again, cryptocurrency becomes more attractive. But there are lots of issues. Yeah. Yeah, you, you said it's going to be a while. Is a while like 10 years or 50 years? Regulation is going to be key. Um, governments can either support it and help cryptocurrency move, or they can just block it completely. And we'll just have to see what's happening there. Uh, Payments Canada is doing a good job in terms of trying to move forward and improve things, but if you, if you look at their work, right now they're focused on payment speed um, as well as data movement, which is somewhat limited right now, and cryptocurrency is, is not on their radar at this moment, but it will be at some point. I'd say that over the next five years, I don't expect cryptocurrency to to have a lot of impact and travel. One thing I'll say on it, just for us, the biggest deterrent to spend any real time looking at it is just that our users haven't been ready for it. Like the biggest barrier for a lot of people is that they don't understand it. And it's kind of almost along the same lines of, as the taxable benefit thing for us. People don't understand what they have or don't have or what they owe or don't owe or what is actually owned by them. And that for us, the 
the education barrier for us to try to help people understand that if we were to say, okay, now you have a vacation coin is just not worth, like the, the time to revenue for us or the time to actually making significant margins on this is just not there. That's just, especially for an early stage startup is you have to maintain focus and if it's not gonna bring you returns today, it's not worth paying attention to. Yeah, it's funny. One thing I've noticed is that if you've got blockchain somewhere in your company description, people want to buy your company. But if you've got it somewhere in your payment section, people don't necessarily just want to buy your product. Uh, but yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I can add to this a little bit. So I'll definitely agree that uh, lead time is a big problem with crypto because of the volatility. Uh, it leads me to think that you know maybe the travel industry will be one of the last to adopt crypto uh, simply because of, of that uh, embedded in our, our industry. Uh, one area where I do see, you know, crypto coming in is anywhere people don't have credit cards or desktops. So in developing worlds where a lot of the payments is mobile, I think that's where we'll see crypto pick up first. But uh, yeah. That's a great answer. Can I just add one point? Just, um, there's, a real, uh, there's a real technology problem right now too with blockchain that um, I'm going to get these numbers wrong, but the quantum is sort of like Visa processes something like 2 million transactions a second and Ethereum can process about 10 or 25. So, and most of it's being used on crypto kitties by South Korean housewives, okay? <laughs> so that's just, the, you know, that kind of needs to be fixed first, like before yeah. anybody takes that really seriously, right? Yeah, well, it's South Korean housewives do buy travel, I don't know. <laughs> but no, fair point, absolutely. Uh, so another thing, like we're really lucky to have uh, two people on the panel from uh, like very different ways of looking at how to uh, facilitate a travel payment. Um, yeah, kind of, kind of age-old age old contrast between uh, savings and uh, and credit. Uh, so Erica and David, like, how, how do you see uh, that playing out? Uh, are, are these the kind of same uh, travelers that you guys are uh, are benefiting? How, how do you think about it? I think it may just end up coming back to the the perspective or the habits of the traveler themselves because I know a lot of people that are very comfortable just putting things on a credit card or paying things off in installments and it just wasn't something that was necessarily a part of my upbringing so I was looking at the other approach oh I would only travel if I had the money put aside in advance and that was just that was just a thing that like I just have a father that's genuinely debt averse and so I think some people the people that just instinctively, whether it's like with shopping or with travel or with their house or anything, are very comfortable putting these things on a card, then like, like it's, and this is something that people told me a lot when I was trying to do the B2C FinTech thing, habit changing is very, very difficult to do in people. It is very difficult to change someone's habits. If someone believes that they are very comfortable just putting things on a credit card, it's very difficult for you to then convince them that that's not the way to go. Or if someone is used to putting money aside for things in advance and then rewarding themselves because they had done that, it's difficult to convince them that debt is the better way because that's just something that I think a lot of people, whether it's just general money habits in someone's household or it's just a habit that they picked up, having whether it's like a school loan that they're struggling to pay off or whatever it may be, like to actually be the company that convinces someone to change those habits is a very difficult thing. So I do actually think that it would be a difference in customer almost. Um, yeah, I, look, I think there's, uh, I think what Erica's doing and Vacation Fund is doing with an enterprise uh, travel reward, travel benefit, I, th I think that's, that's huge. Like I, I think that that is a real um, differentiator for company. Like you think of today, especially for tech companies, like trying to hire people. Like it's if you don't have the masseuse, the you know the the chef, the you know vacation to wherever. Like it's just, so you you need the next thing. But I, I think it's 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 broader than that. That it really is into um, people taking their holidays to recharge. Right. Um, so definitely massive buyer of that. I think. Um, in terms of the product, in terms of what you're offering, I think you know our thing is, uh, and we see it in 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 e-commerce everywhere. It's choice. It's it's like really the people that are going to win, and this gets into uh, you know something I'm pretty passionate about: is open banking APIs, uh, which is folks is coming to Canada like in two years or less. Uh, and so what that is all about is really enabling people to make their choice, right? Offer them options, 
let them make a choice, right? And, and I think that's, uh, you know, that's what we're all about, is, is kind of creating another alternative that gives people that, yeah, maybe they've got a credit card in their pocket and they might do that because um, they want the points, which is another sort of tangent, uh, but, um, but really just enabling them uh, choices, right? And for people that, um, you know, are, are shut out of this kind of space, like they, they have uh, poor access to credit or um, there's something that we can see in their data uh, when we look at their data that isn't represented by that 600 FICO score that they have that says that, well, actually, we can see that this person has $50 a week in their account. We can see that they've been paid by the same employer for the last three years consistently, but uh, they don't have a Diners Club, clearly, or they don't even have an MBNA or Cap One high-rate credit card, but we can still send them to Cuba, right? And I think it's really about offering those kind of choices, really. Oh, am I on? That makes perfect sense. I'd like to open that up, uh, Lion or Mark. Do you guys have any notes on? That's cool. Uh, and it, oh, this is great. And and I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's a very interesting thing that people should definitely be thinking about in travel. Uh, you know, it, it's a it's travel tech to you. So I really want to close on uh, the panel portion on an optimistic note. What's something that gets you guys really excited about uh, payments and travel? Uh, what what gets you uh, going beyond just my company is doing something amazing? I think tech is making travel more accessible to everyone, and uh, I'm a big fan of travel, so I'm excited for that. The options that are there are are just amazing. When we talk about even Airbnb now, when you when you're looking for a place to go to, Airbnb is much easier than looking for a hotel. You can actually find things that are very specific to you that excite you and we're going to now Airbnb is the lower cost while still maintaining value portion when we when we look at a lot of other options the higher quality potentially higher cost options are also there they're more accessible they're just so convenient I love the convenience of travel now before you had to so many things were done offline now everything is online and I want to make sure that we're not taking that for granted at the same time. Um, and it just, it makes travel so much better. Um, the, the payments part of it is so much better with that. And I just love where it's headed and it's only gonna get better. Yeah, I think it's a great time to be a consumer. Um, this is now where we're gonna see the winners uh, uh, really focus on a consumer, really focus on delivering a, an experience really understanding the consumer, that it, and it's not just one size that fits all consumer, right? Because we have now the technology to really collect, you know, different, forget about Cambridge Analytica for a second, but collect real, uh, uh, you know, viable, permissioned data points and really understand uh, that, that consumer and what they're trying to do, which benefits them, which then helps with conversion. And I'll say one thing on the business travel side, I'm really happy that Wave is making it easier for me to track my business expenses when I travel. Um, but I also just think <laughs> he didn't pay me to say that. <laughs> I'm really glad that they're helping me track my business expenses. Um, but I think on the consumer side, I just think that the, the ability to take and share photos right now is expanding people's bucket lists. And I think it's helping people realize parts of the world that, and some people are okay doing the more cliche touristy travels and like everyone has to go see the Eiffel Tower, of course, but people are now having access to be able to view parts of the world that they otherwise wouldn't have known existed if it hadn't been, whether it was someone on Instagram or someone just searching on Google Images, unique travel places or different articles. Like I think that is one thing that technology has done for travel and I honestly and I believe there's a place sometimes for traveling without technology obviously we now help people we sort of preach disconnecting as well um, but knowing that those places around the world are out there that some people haven't seen or you could have this unique experience or you could you could access something that you wouldn't have otherwise known was out there I think I think that's powerful and I think it's helping improve people's lives I totally agree all right, so now we're gonna open it up to the group. Uh, if anyone has any questions, we've got, uh, we've got plenty of time. What time the Raptors start?
What time do you have? 8.30. So, oh. Soon. We've got eight minutes. <laughs> we need to pray for them in those eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, pray. pray. All right. Any questions? I guess this is for you. you. You had the privilege of interviewing everybody and hearing so much about it. Uh, what, what's your take on uh, payments and travel tech as it relates to your startup, to Sherpa? Uh, so as it relates to travel, uh, the nice thing is like what everybody brought up, which was optionality. Um, you can find uh, everything you need to put together something that's going to work for your target market. Uh, to really get people through to uh, to conversion, and yeah, with my product, uh, what we've seen generally is like the more options that we have available to people, to people uh, the higher our conversion rate is. Uh, for us, I mean, the people that need our product the most are in uh, you know places with people with really weak passports. So you know we're not able to get away with just having something super easy. Like for us, uh, using. Uh, using Stripe, we lost the ability to process payments with uh, with Bitcoin, uh, and like that was something that we actually did have to think about because you know we're going after people from all over the world. Uh, so for uh, a lot of people here, it's not a big deal, but for me, all of a sudden, I've got to be able to facilitate these payments because you know you're not you don't want to be paying in your government's currency if it's being inflated a ton uh, and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, the the big thing it comes back to really is optionality and knowing your customer. Uh, knowing what you're going to need to make them convert. But yeah, this is a great question. All right. Anyone else? That was a very clearly very comprehensive panel. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I? Is there a quick open mic? Uh, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Um, so we're uh, a startup, and we're just kind of getting out to launch soon. Um, we're looking for. Um, OTAs, airlines, and tour operators, Christian, uh, to potentially partner with, slash pilot, <laughs> slash beta. Um, and so that's one shout out. Second, uh, we're looking for users, and we're going to be uh, promoting a contest of a giveaway uh, for a decent size gift card to one of the big OTAs uh, to come to our site to do uh, a little bit of Q&A, and, uh, and then we'll enter you into the contest. And while you're there, if you want to get uh, pre-qualified uh, on, on a loan for your next holiday, uh, you can do that as well. So that's on our site, pays.com, uh, right now. Thank you. All right. Let's, let's go get some loans for trips. <laughs> Great. Well, that, that's awesome. I, I really appreciate it, guys. This is a fantastic panel. Uh, yeah, thanks so much. <laughs>